All right, so we're in Ohio. We're at Michael Hausch's place, and we're going to get a glimpse of the future. Behind me, we have the Franken system. So to give you a little bit of tidbit about what this is about, we have a double return setup. The first return is going through the evaporator coil. The second return is a straight up bypass. Who better to explain that than Michael Hausch himself? So let's introduce Michael House. Give us the spill, man. Hi there. Thanks uh, for coming here. Part of uh, the goal of the Franken system is to move higher than nominal airflow. I, I do have a unique scenario where I have a very large volume home with a low load and so part of the goal of the Franken system is to be able to move three tons of airflow with only two tons of cooling and so how I'm accomplishing that is by being able to bypass air around my coil but maintain the correct airflow across my coil for proper dehumidification purposes. And so one of the unique challenges in my system is to determine the airflow through each return drop that I have as well as the total system airflow and that's where the true flow grid comes into play. And so we've we are in the R&D aspect of this where we are using devices that aren't in a conventional way that you normally would. And so the route that we decided to take to determine total system airflow was to actually use the true flow grid in the supply of the system as my supply dimensions are not changing and that is where we are able to determine the total airflow through the system. We then also do some measurements, uh, like I said, that are not in the realm of the normal use case of the true flow to try to determine the flow through each individual drop. So I think this is a good point to start with the supply measurement and show you the total flow of the system. Okay, so the reason we're here is this. We have two returns for an important reason, and we want to measure the airflow in both of those different returns. That way Michael here will know where to set his dampers throughout the season, so we can use that as a way to determine the adequate flow for the coil and the adequate flow for the bypass in indoor air quality. So here's the two tests we're going to run today that's a little unconventional for the true flow. So research and development day, here we go. Test number one, we're gonna put the true flow in the supply. We're gonna pull a correction factor from the return side. It's not in the workflow, like I said, this is R&D. The reason we're doing that is so we can know the total flow, right? Because we don't know how to separate these two unless we know what the flow is. It's like a check and balance we're about to do. So we're gonna put the true flow in the supply, get that total flow measurement, then round two, we're going to put two true flows, one in each return. First test we're going to do on this bad boy, we're going to put the true flow in the supply plenum of this install with a correction factor from the return. Okay, the reason we're going to do that is so we can confirm total system flow on this machine. So Michael has put in the true flow grid, and he's taken the corrected reading. He's going to tell us how many CFM we got, Michael. 1,214 CFM. 1,214 CFM. So now we know total flow. We're going to jump into test two. Okay, here we go to test two. We're going to get the measurement flow of each return drop. Michael's going to work on setting the grids in place. 
I'm going to kind of cover what's happening here with these manometers. So just so there's no misconception about two static pressure probes in different ports, what we did was put one static pressure probe in the supply. We have teed the line, so we're sending the exact same signal to both manometers. That way it's the same measurement, the same correction to each true flow grid. He's going to get those installed. Once he does that, he's got a tablet set up and his phone set up. So he's running both of those grids, one on each different platform. He's going to take measurement, and then we're going to get a flow measurement on each grid independently. And that's how we're going to know how many CFM is going through each drop. Okay, so we just got done with test number two. Michael, how'd we turn out? So uh, we have about 510 CFM through our coil drop and about 685 through our bypass. So that leads us to a total of 1192, which is within a reasonable margin of error of our total system airflow we measured at 1210 some CFM, right? So that leads us to some pretty high confidence that we are measuring the correct values through each one. And um, I think Chris has some information about how we also used the pressure drop from the filter manufacturer to as another reference. Yeah, so, you know, we wanted to make sure the true flows were reading correctly, even though both of these tests are unconventional to what we've been doing and what we said in the workflow. Uh, we're confident on what we're doing here, but just as a check and balance. So we used the pressure drop charts on the filter, right? And when we took those static pressure measurements across the filter, we got about 1200 CFM. So we know that's what we're dealing with. We've measured it in total system airflow, right? So we have that measurement there. So we know, right, that we have that total system flow. So now separating it, and when you separating them and you put them back together and they equal 1200, you have that confidence level that it's working out, right? Yeah, and I would also say that while we're currently in Ohio, not warm enough to run air conditioning, when I did have this system running in the current damper configuration that we're testing against, I was freezing up my evaporator coil, which makes sense at 500 CFM or 250 CFM per ton. I was getting suction saturations in the 30 degrees, 31 degree range which would cause my coil to freeze up if the system ran for long enough. And so that is also another measurement or prediction that we could have made uh, or, or that the true flow is backing up, I think is a good way to right. put it. And if, so- If we were moving more CFM through the coil you know what I'm saying? Then it wouldn't be freezing up and these numbers wouldn't add up. So when we're hitting 500, we know that we're moving 250 CFM per ton. We know that this coil is probably going to be freezing, right? So yeah. it makes sense. Everything's lining up. It right? is all so we can lining kind of trust up it. and has uh, been interesting to kind of gather this data on, uh, like uh, the... Like I said, the, the current test situation is not the way that I run cooling, but it is a way to allow me to t determine what damper positions I need during different operating modes of my system. And so um, it is very awesome to get measurements that line up with the science of what we would expect to happen during a given scenario. 
So just going to throw this out there. You've got a unique system and you need to know the flow. Give us a shout at the Energy Conservatory. We'll help you out. There's some unconventional ways we could put these to use. Maybe they'll become part of the workflow. I don't know. That's not my call, <laughs> but it sure is fun, right? So we'll see where it goes.